The House Elections Committee will come to order. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, remember that we do have a one video recording today. Uh, Ms. Van call the roll, please. Chair Edlinger. Yes. Here. Vice Chair Dogan. Here. Representative Chipman. Here. Conway. Here. Badger. Here. Kidd. Polkmeyer. Here. McGall. Here. Newman. Here. Shaw. Smith. Taylor. Here. All right, we have quorum. Uh, we are going to go into executive. Uh, the committee will go into executive session first. Um, I have a motion to be passed House Bill 341. Is there any discussion? If you want to do a little refresher real quick. It's uh, Representative Duggar's bill and it concerns uh, filing of ethics reports. Um, to, I guess, make a comment or, or to comment on the bill just a little bit to bring everybody up to speed. This was a bill that I introduced here that requires uh, everyone that is required to file an ethics report that they have to do that online. It also eliminates the duplicate reporting, uh, whereas some candidates have to file with the state and with the local election authority. So it kind of eliminates some of that duplicate stuff and puts everything online uh, for everyone that has to file. Thank you. Any discussion? All right. Ms. Van Cole, roll. Chair Kenlicker? Yes. Vice Chair Dogan? Yes. Representative Chipman? Yes. Conway? Yes. Ducker? Yes. Kidd? Yes. Holtzmeyer? Yes. McGall? Yes. Newman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Smith? And Taylor? Yes. All right, by your vote of 11 to 0. Uh, 11 yes to 0 no, you have voted have House Bill 341 to pass. And at this time, we'll go out of executive commission or executive session. I'm talking about my old commissioner days, I guess. And first bill, bill that we will hear is. Uh, Now remember, uh, on the uh, hearing notice, we put three to five minutes just to allow for time's sake. We want everybody to be able to speak that would like to. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Members of committee, for the record, Joe Don McGall, 39th District, Ray Carroll, and Sheridan Counties. House Bill 339. Um, what I'm attempting to do in the original bill is filed. Uh, we have passed out a House committee substitute uh, this morning. Uh, it does exactly the same thing. That the impetus is to no longer allow utility bills, bank statements, or paychecks to be used as personal identification to receive a ballot. I believe that the spirit of the law is and should be that a form of ID is needed to receive a ballot. And under my understanding, a utility bill, a bank statement, and a paycheck are not IDs. So if you'll go through, I'll go through the House Committee substitute, what we call the House Committee substitute, with you. Uh, most of this language was struck down by the courts in 2006 with the line chink opinion. Uh, so what we're doing on page one, a bracket begins um, on line four. 
and it goes all the way to page six. So before receiving the ballot, voters shall, shall identify themselves. It goes all the way to page six and takes out what the court has struck down from the following list, an ID issued by the state of Missouri, agency of the state, the local election authority of the state, identification issued by the United States government or agency thereof, identification issued by an institution of higher education, etc., a driver's license or state ID card issued by another state or other identification approved by the Secretary of State under rules prom promulgated. And then we also allow for if an individual doesn't have those, uh, they can vote if two of the election judges actually know that person they can sign an affidavit. Uh, and then going on to page eight, we bracket out uh, the portion that was struck down by the court in regards to provisional ballots. And provisional ballots will still remain in 115.430. So it's cleaning up a little bit of language and taking out the ability to use those items I talked about uh, as IDs. But it's interesting to point out that you may hear, and I, I think we received some testimony last night, that if we pass this into law, this will make Missouri a strict photo ID state. That's simply not true because as I've talked about, there are many provisions in here that allow for non-photo IDs. The one that sticks out the most to me and what I usually use to vote is a voter ID card from a local election authority under the authority of the state. Those are not photo identification cards. And there are other items in here that are not photo IDs, but regular IDs that would require the voter to use to get a ballot. So, I think it's a reasonable approach. I think that it's narrowly tailored, unlike a photo ID that may uh, get caught up in the courts, photo ID bill. Um, I think it clears up uh, some of the issues that we have with current law uh, and the potential for fraud in the voting process. So if there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Any questions? Let's sponsor the bill. Ms. Newman. To inquire, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, good morning, Representative. Can morning. you tell us uh, what's actually different between the substitute and the original bill? Yeah, I, I went over that in quite a bit of detail. Uh, in the, I mean, in the, just, but that, those are the differences? Is in, the, in the original, um, when I took this to drafting, they simply just took out um, the portion that talked about uh, the use of the utility bill bank statement government check, paycheck, or other government document that contains the name and address of the voter. That portion was actually in the one of the provisions that was struck down that isn't even used at this point. Okay, so, so, the, so your original bill was not drafted on current correct. statute. Correct. Okay, so well, that's, it, it's current statute, but it's unconstitutional statute. So it, it's there, but not there. Okay. It's like a ghost statute. Okay. I mean, we've looked at it, and it's like I think there's two different right. versions yeah. in, in actually the statute. Um, the other thing that you talk about in terms of um, this would make it strict voter ID. Um, don't believe that's correct because, as you mentioned, um, it would still allow for election board notification. But I wanted to point out to you, St. Louis County, which is the biggest county of voters, does not use their election board notification but it states right on there this cannot be used to you know at when you show up to re retrieve the ballot so i just want to make sure that you knew that plus i, I didn't know that there's um could be other I, counties too that do not that say specifically on the notification that it cannot be used on election day so uh, i want to point out that to you and also do you have um what would be your purpose of, of eliminating these three items, which again, again, I think the spirit of the law is that an individual, when they vote to receive a ballot, they have to identify themselves. And when I look at the items now that are acceptable, I don't think a utility bill, a bank statement, or a paycheck is a form of identification. Do you know where that came from? It came from Hava. Right. And America. lots of different, lots of states don't follow the Hava form. So, okay, even though that went into effect in 2002, um, is there a problem the last 13, 15 years of people using that? And again, um, 
when we actually, we already know who voters are when they register. We already know that they are, um, uh, if not, they don't, they are, don't go on the books, but we already know that they have been cross-checked with their social security number or their driver's license. Um, so we already have an identity matched with them. We already know in statute that the first time you vote, you have to show something that shows that you're a real person. So Mickey Mouse cannot show up to vote, has to be something that uh, identifies them. And then do you know what the underlying purposes of some of these other forms of ID? Again, people that do not have driver's licenses or do not have the things that you still have listed here, um, they have one additional element that a, a driver's license, which is the common form, doesn't contain. Do you know what that is? Address. Correct. And um, I believe since we already know who you are on election day, that's already been verified. And of course, if you voted in person already, your identity has already been authorized. Um, and particularly in St. Louis County, where even in my own district, where I have uh, tons of precincts, and we want to make sure that people are actually going to the correct place if they do not have their, their driver's license. And these items actually are probably the most, and that's why they were included in HAVA, they are the most current something that somebody would have coming to an address where you're actually living, that you're actually voting in the correct place. Um, we do have people who, as you know all the time, I don't know if you particularly your county, my county specifically on election day, people have moved and they're always confused over where do you go to vote. Um, and do you also know um, how many people are actually using these? No. No. So no idea who actually is using this? I think we'll have some testimony as to one county. I don't think it's as high as what we think it is. And I have no. So I don't think they keep those numbers. Does that number matter to you? Is it important? What matters to me is that we uh, protect the integrity of elections and we protect Article 1, Section 25, and we keep uh, elections free, open, and honest to all the citizens of the state of Missouri. So how does taking that out do that? <clears throat> Again, I believe the spirit of the law is that when an individual goes to the precinct to vote and they request a ballot, that they produce a form of personal identification to prove that they are the person who has requested that ballot. Okay. And I think that this does this and it takes out the items you, that are not identifications to make sure the person requesting the ballot is the person who's registered to vote. So people who may be using these items that do not have the, like I said, the typical driver's license. <clears throat> that's when you would use these other items, correct? I mean, if you've got something that's clear and easy, you're not gonna- No, I, <coughs> excuse me. So I, I think they would use, um, if they don't have a driver's license. Because we know there I are think that they, not. I think if they don't have the driver's license, they could use an identification issued by the state of Missouri, an agency of the state, or a local election authority of the state, an identification issued by the United States government or agency thereof, identification issued by an institution of higher education, including a university, college, or vocational technical school located within the state, or other identification approved by the Secretary of State under rules promulgated. Well, my question was, if you didn't have those, that's when you... You asked, no, your question them. was, if they didn't have a driver's license, what would they use? Well, and I answered that question. So the reason that people would use these other I, these other forms on election day uh, are because most likely they don't have the. I, I can't answer that question. I don't. So if, I don't know why. Whether you, you I, I suspect when they're using those because it's in the statute as currently written. Even though they're probably harder to retrieve and harder to take with you, but there are people that are, have actually used these, correct? I would assume so, yes. That's why they, be, they were put in statute to kind of I, cover I, those who do not have... I think you're going to have to ask Congress when they pass HAVA why they put that in there, and then the state picked up what they put in there. Uh, actually, are you familiar with the original bill that actually allowed this in Missouri? No. Okay. It was
was that actually a, uh, Anita Geckel, Republican state senator who passed this, it actually included that form too at the time. Um, there did not seem to be a problem with using these other, uh, uh, which they're not actually forms of ID, they're forms of you know proving who you are on election day in terms of your residence. Um, and if you're not sure of who actually is using those now, um, is there a concern that people would be duplicating those items? Yes. And using them fraudulently? Yes. Can you walk us through what those steps would be? I would probably scan one, put it on a computer, and put my name on it with my address. And how would you, what would the, the steps be to actually use that on election day? I would, you'd have to, if, if you register someone fraudulently, if I, Register Stacy Newman in Carroll County, Missouri, and I don't know they can lie. She'd be registered there. I would get a. Um, how would I? How would I, would, I would get a, a utility bill. I would get a utility bill. I would. I would. I would mark out the part that with the computer with computer technology and, and put your address on there, and then I would go and show that to the election judge. who would then look in their poll book and see that name that address and then I had the utility bill. Was that name, even though you said this is you're making this up because obviously I don't know, I don't You asked there. me to make it up. So therefore on when that registration is run, would that bounce it out then? Bounce what out? That I'm falsely registering it. How would they know that? I'm, t I'm saying I know you're come up with a person. I, I just use your name because I'm looking at you. But in terms of walking through those steps, um, Sure, there's many things that are hypothetical, but at the same time, if you were going to go through all of these steps, particularly if it's someone's real uh, utility bill, for example, you would have to know when that other voter is not going to vote or is going to be out of town. You're going to have to know where that is. You're going to have to have a way to get a hold of that utility bill. And all of those steps, knowing that it's a felony, knowing that you're facing a uh, uh, years in prison, knowing you're facing uh, up to a $10,000 fine, wouldn't it be so much easier to go register and go vote and not have to worry about committing a felony? I think folks who are in, uh, out there to commit voter fraud uh, will take the steps necessary so you to think there are people that fraud. This right now? I do. Is there, do you have any cases? Uh, I do not. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Jack. To inquire, to inquire, Madam Chairman. Yes, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Um, I actually think you have a great bill here. I appreciate that. Uh, actually, an outstanding bill. Gentlemen, just to cover a few things that maybe the lady has brought up. Um, currently, when you register to vote, you're mailed a voter ID card, right? That's one of the options, correct. And you're still allowing that to be used, right? Correct. And on that voter ID card, um, it, it it gives you all the information that you need. It tells you where your polling place is. It gives you the address of your polling place. It has your address on there. It has everything on there that you need to vote, correct? Correct. So that's, that's a perfect form that every single person should have with them all the time. So that's one form that they can use to vote. Plus, you'll have very, several, many more right. in statute. Right. Now, she asked you if you knew of the case, and, and, you, and you didn't, but I actually do. In 2012, in Jackson County, where uh, I learned this past summer when I was meeting with the election board members from up there, where a lady went in, got off work and went to vote, and it was discovered that she had already voted. And somebody had used one of these forms that you're trying to eliminate right. to vote in her name fraudulently. So actually that person got to cast two votes and this lady didn't get to cast her vote at all. Does that seem fair? No, not at all, not at all. So would you say that these forms that you are trying to eliminate would actually make it easier to cheat or commit fraud? I think by taking these out, we, we are trying to solve that issue that had occurred in Jackson County. Yeah, gentlemen, and I think you're correct, and I, I definitely support your bill. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Any other questions of the sponsors? Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Just on a foot 
note to your and the gentleman from Wright's conversation, our DMV issued 1,200 fraudulent licenses, and as you know, so there's a number of ways that uh, fraud can occur. Let's go to the technical stuff, because I think doing this, I think a lot of the discussion is going to have to go over what you're eliminating. Everything from 115,427, correct, to all the way to page six, right? So, how does that affect the gentleman's House Bill 30? Well, that's a good question. Um, I, my understanding of how this would all work was that uh, if House Bill 30 goes into effect, it would probably uncertain what I'm trying to accomplish. Well, what if yours comes in later? Well, I, I, that's probably going to be an issue of, you know, some work in between uh, House Bill 30 sponsor and myself to see, you know, where the thing about House Bill 30 is it's it's kind of a tag team effort in my opinion. You know, you've got the the uh, House Joint Resolution and then you've got the, the the actual bill. So my thought would be this is much more palatable. In my opinion, this is something that would probably survive a court challenge. On, on its face, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, this may be a temporary item, depending on what happens in the future. Um, but well, there's there's at least two, possibly three or four, substantial changes that you say are more palatable. Would would those be acceptable as the final piece of legislation that? That, that's a question you're going to have to ask the sponsor of House Bill 30. I think we've broached on those issues, and I, I think I know the answer to that question, but uh, it's not, that's not my place to say. Okay. So before we access that, I'm sure we can have that conversation you know, with you and the sponsor of 30 and the chair and see where we're going with this. Because, I mean, I think we're eliminating, you know, we know what happened last year, and with the best of intentions, we all went in to eliminate some of the depth of the statutes. <clears throat> I think we need to go over this a little bit more specifically about the deleted part and see how that's going to affect any other legislation that's going parallel to it and <laughs> determine which is one of the languages is going to be the final version if it's going to be used as the supplement to the uh, constitutional amendment. So thank you for your inquiry, Madam Chair. Any other questions of the sponsoring bill? Okay, we'll move on to the next item. Is there anyone here to witness the favor of the bill today? I'm Wendy Moore, and I'm in County Clerk of Finn County, Missouri, and uh, also on behalf of the Missouri Association of County Clerks on Election Authority. Uh, I want to thank, I'm here to speak in favor of the substitute. Uh, I'll give you a little background because back in 1983, I wrote the original piece of legislation that authorized an election authority to check identification. It was in conjunction with utilizing uh, computer printouts at the polling place. Prior to that, we had a signature card in the whole world. That law required us to provide identification to every single voter when they registered to vote and whenever they moved or had any other change to their registration. So Missouri law currently requires every election authority to provide once every two years uh, voter identification to every single registered voter or when they provide a change of address or not. This is different from the notification card of many clerks and now, but every single voter receives identification under the law uh, that is part of our required list maintenance activities to provide that every two years. Um, currently, we're in a state with identification in Missouri where we have in our statutes laws that were declared unconstitutional. And part of what this bill, the substitute is doing, is let's get those pieces out of the law that were declared unconstitutional. Uh, all of us would like to see that. Believe me, I have poll workers. You know, they get a copy of this law out of the polling place. 
guys. And they're out there arguing with other poll workers, telling them they got to show this picture ID. They're arguing with me in training sessions. You know, there's nothing worse than having somebody having copies of the law in your try on election day, trying to enforce something, and you're trying to explain to them that was declared unconstitutional 10 years ago. So let's get this cleaned up before we get into 2016. The second piece that this does is it does remove one of the current re identification classifications that we are using. This is a classification that was never used in Missouri uh, during the period 1983 to 2003 when we required identification uh, but we did not allow the use of a utility bill or a bank statement. As far as I know, there was never any problem with that situation. And in fact, I would have to lay the blame for the photo ID movement starting in this country to the fact that Congress adopted this utility bill bank statement it started making people very uncomfortable with the ID requirements. Um, you know, I, there are many election officials who are uncomfortable with it. Many of my poll workers are uncomfortable with it. Um, and let's face it, elections are sometimes about the comfort level of things. And you have to balance who are you restricting with how, whether or not you're making sure people are comfortable with the process. I believe that the way Representative McGaw has drafted this particular piece of legislation, he is finding that balance between the comfort level of requiring identification, but not restricting access to the system. And I can assure you in my 20 plus years between 1983 and 2003, I never had anybody say, can I use my bank statement? Can I use a utility bill? Now, since that time, we've had occasional ones because it's on the list. And I'll tell you, I've had joggers. They've got the mail in their car. You know, they, they left their driver's license at home or something like that, or their other ID. But they got, you know, they picked up the mail on the way out. I, you know, I have a total, you know, I went back and checked. I am tracking this now. So I, I can get numbers in my county. Out of over 300,000 ballots cast since 2010, I've had a total of 81. Uh, I've had, uh, sorry, I think I, I think I had 17 of the bank statements and Right, 64 of the utility bills, or vice versa. I, I'll need to go back and check that. You know, I think a lot of people think this is what poor people, people poor people don't have bank statements. I'm sorry, they don't. You know, people living in projects don't have utility bills. Students don't have utility bills. They live in dormitories, they live in group housing, or they want to six kids in a thing, and only one of them has their name on the utility bill. We are not taking out an identification that is a common thing for the kind of people who need identification. We are leaving in things such as the work card. We are leaving in things such as the Medicare, Medicaid identification. These are the identifications that poor people use uh, more often than a utility bill or a bank statement. These are more convenient things to somebody who's misplaced their purse or something like that. And I don't see this. I, I'm, very happy that Representative Duger loves this bill. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to, I was unable to come up with justify against the photo ID, so I, I don't want anybody to mistake that I believe in, you know, this is bringing back photo ID because it's not, and I am opposed, remain personally opposed to that. But I do believe we have found this balance that we need to find between people creating the comfort level on identification requirements that people want, uh, as far as particularly Republicans, and not restricting access that people in other party, you know, my party, are concerned about. I do not believe the way this is drafted, it is going to cause access problems for people. I do believe it increased the comfort level uh, of many people in removing the thing that most people felt were the 
type of identification that could be created from Todd's or hers. Any questions? Are there any questions about this? To inquire. Uh, madam, I'm just glad to say that you're kind of moving in my direction. <laughs> I think you're moving in my direction, darling. <laughs> Find this spot that I, I think we found this spot here with representative McGosville. All right, any other questions at this witness? All right, thank you, Mr. Wayne. We appreciate you coming and giving us a history lesson and uh, always appreciate your efforts to help with elections. All right, anyone else to witness in favor of the bill? All right, anyone here to witness in opposition to the bill? Uh, Madam Chairman, members of the committee, Alex Eaton representing the ACLU of Missouri, and we wanted to go on record in opposition of this bill. And I was, um, we haven't looked at the substitute, so I'm I'm testifying for the original bill. So I'm going to have to. I mean, we're going to review it, look at it, so this this could change, but. Showing up this morning, it was on behalf of the original bill, so just want to go on record in opposition. All right, thank you, sir. Please leave this morning. Any uh, questions, uh, Mr. Duck? To inquire. Okay, gentlemen, who did you say you represent? Today? The ACLU of Missouri. Okay. And this, the substitute's not really going to change a whole lot. It's still going to eliminate the uh, documents. Uh, and this bill is similar to a bill that I filed earlier in session. So let me ask you a question. Do you believe that there's broad, you're familiar with ACORN, right? And, and the, the issues that they had with yeah. fraudulent voter registration. So do you think there's fraudulent voter registration going on? I would say that's fair to say. Okay. And why would somebody do that? I guess it would it mean that they would have the intent to also vote fraudulently? I would say it would depend person to person, but I would say that intent would probably be, could be fair to say yes. Yeah. And let me ask you another question. If you uh, were looking forward to voting in a presidential election, say in November, and you get to the polls and suddenly figure out that somebody has already voted for you and they used your utility bill that they still out of your mailbox or your trash can, would you be upset? I would be. Would you be furious? I don't really get furious. But you don't get furious? No. But you would just be upset just a little bit? Yeah, probably. Not majorly, that somebody had voted for you? No, probably not. I don't, I don't get, I don't get so, so do you take elections seriously? I do. You do, yeah. but not serious enough that if somebody voted for you that you wouldn't be furious? At the end of the day, I think it would upset me that my vote wasn't counted. I think it would anybody. All right, and then what would you do? Well, at the moment, I don't know what I could do. I mean, I'm sure I would report it and say, some, I went to the polls and tried to vote this morning at my local voting booth and realized that someone else had voted. So either someone voted twice or I wasn't able to vote. So... You realize, and how do you think you'd catch the person who voted for you? That I have no idea. Can you think of any way that you could possibly track that person down? Is not having law enforcement back there on no. Well, and correct, and unless there was a camera on the, the line when they were signing in, there'd be no way to catch it, would there? Uh, I would say that's probably accurate, yes. So wouldn't it be much more simpler just to eliminate these uh, IDs that we're using to prevent that problem from ever happening and protect the integrity of elections in the state. Not only the integrity of elections, but your vote as well as my vote. I guess some would feel that way, yes. Yeah. And you realize in 2012 in Jackson County, this actually happened to a lady who got off work at 5 o'clock, went to the polls to vote, and somebody had voted in her place. I was not aware of that until this morning. All right. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Any other questions for this witness? Okay, thank you, sir, very much. Thank you.
Anyone else here to witness in opposition to the bill? All right, anyone here to witness in uh, for informational purposes only? All right, thank you. Mr. McGall? Madam Chairman, members of the committee, I uh, appreciate you hearing this bill. Uh, I think it's, as Ms. Norris says, uh, hopefully maybe some common ground where we can work out some issues, and I look forward to working on with you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other, anything else that needs to come before the committee today? All right. The committee is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.